Uh, hi guys, it's Geekonomics here once again. It's been a while since I've posted a video, particularly with regard to revision. So I thought today I would just take a quick look at the transport paper, F584. So that's those people who are studying for their A-level economics rather than GCSE economics. And there is very often a question on the exam paper, an essay question, which asks you to compare um, competition in transport markets. And generally then you're asked to consider efficiencies and particular types of efficiency. So I thought we'd just look at that <coughs> for a few moments this afternoon. So in front of you, you can see I've identified the five or so different efficiencies which you may wish to talk about. Number one is productive efficiency. That means that the producer is producing at the point uh, of the minimum average total cost curve. Average costs are at their lowest. Then we've got allocative efficiency. Allocative efficiency arising at the point at which price is equal to marginal cost. Uh, you'll know the definition of allocative efficiency from your studies of AS level economics whereby whatever the consumer is demanding is being produced and more resources being allocated towards that particular good or service and hence it's allocatively efficient. Indeed I think that was on the 581 paper this year. Now here's a term perhaps you haven't heard of before but if you have productive and allocative efficiency that is known as Pareto efficiency named after the economist Vilfredo Pareto. And the final two, static efficiency, that means that you're comparing efficiencies at a point in time, which is generally what you'll be doing in your analysis for the F584 paper. And then dynamic efficiency means that you're considering uh, efficiencies over time. So I'm just going to run through what is the most commonly used uh, diagram for this, which would be the monopoly versus perfect competition diagram. Let me see if I can just set this camera up a little bit better. It's not great. Straighten this out a bit. Okay. So at least you can see the axes there and I'll try and keep everything I do within the frame. So here we've got our typical sort of standard diagram for perfect competition monopoly. So we've got on the y-axis we've got price on the x-axis we've got output, we've got our average revenue curve downwards sloping from left to right, also as you will know sometimes referred to as the demand curve, we've got our marginal revenue curve and we've got our marginal cost curve also sometimes referred to as the supply curve. In your F584 paper you may be asked to compare uh, competition in a transport market assuming that competition is increasing and hence we're moving from a monopoly setup to a perfect competition setup and that's what I want to consider on this diagram so let's put our price and output points on for monopoly to begin with you all know I'm sure that the monopolist maximizes their profits where MC is equal to MR. So we're looking for this intersection here and from there we can take this down to the x-axis to get the output of the monopolist. So I'm going to call that Q mon. Now don't make the mistake of now taking a dash line across to the y-axis and assuming that that is your price point for the monopolist because of course the price point always comes from the average revenue curve. So we need to take that dashed line at QMON all the way up to the demand curve and then across to the y-axis. And hence that is the price of the monopolist. So that's the monopoly price and the monopoly output. Okay. We all know that the monopolist is a profit maximizer. 
and they make monopoly rent, they make abnormal profit. I hope you've spotted by now that we're missing a curve on this diagram and that is the average total cost curve. Now, I love these diagrams, ladies and gentlemen. I just love drawing these diagrams. When I was at university, these were my favourite points of analysis when we are looking at competition. I think it's easier to draw this diagram if you leave the average total cost curve off until the end. And once you've put on your price and output points, then put your average total cost curve on. Now, you should know that the average total cost curve passes through, or certainly the midpoint of the average total cost curve, passes through this point here, for reasons which I will explain uh, in two or three minutes time. So I'm just going to draw that average total cost curve on like so, and just make sure that the minimum point goes through there. So there's average total cost. So to come back to the monopolist then, here we've got the monopolist price. What is the cost of producing this output Q mon? Well, to get the cost, we need to go to the total cost curve. So I go to there, which is the point at which this dashed line intersects the average total cost curve. And we take that across, and then that is the cost of the monopoly output. And as I'm sure you know, this area here, which I've shaded, that is what we would refer to as, ladies and gentlemen, a number of different uh, terms for it. So we can describe it as monopoly rent. We can describe it as abnormal profit. All sorts of different things that we can uh, turn that. We can call it super normal profit. All of these terms I'm sure you've heard of before. Okay, so that's the monopolist. Let's now consider the perfectly competitive firm. So in a transport market, we are increasing the amount of competition in the market, and hence we're moving away from a monopoly scenario towards a perfectly competitive, a more competitive scenario. Where is the appropriate output point for the perfectly competitive firm? Well, I hope that you know, ladies and gentlemen, that point is where P is equal to MC. Now, where does P equal MC, ladies and gentlemen? P equals MC at this point here. It's where the supply curve intersects the demand curve, that point there. And from your knowledge of the perfectly competitive market and perfectly competitive diagrams, you should also know, therefore, that the perfectly competitive firm is, as we've said previously, it is productively efficient. In other words, it produces at the minimum point on the ATC curve. And that is the reason why I was able to draw that ATC curve with its minimum point going through the intersection of MC and AR. So I'm going to take that across, ladies and gentlemen, to the price point, PPC, and take it down to the x-axis to get the output point, QPC. So let's consider what's going on here. The price under perfect competition, that is up here, I'm looking on the wrong axis, the price in perfect competition, as you can see, is less than the price of the monopolist and the output under perfect competition is greater than the output of the monopolist. So the monopolist is restricting output, restricting supply in order to maximize their profits. But this has an impact on how efficient they are. So let's just consider the efficiencies. We said that a firm will be productively efficient if price is equal to the minimum ATC. Is that the case for the monopoly, ladies and gentlemen? Of course it's not. There is the minimum, but under monopoly outputs here, there's the average total cost. So it is very much to the left of the minimum point. And hence we can say, we can clearly demonstrate here, 
that the monopolist is not productively efficient, it's productively inefficient. What about allocative efficiency, where price equals marginal cost? Is the monopolist allocatively efficient, ladies and gentlemen? Well, what's the price, sorry, what's the marginal cost of producing the monopoly output? Well, the marginal cost, ladies and gentlemen, is at this point, where MC equals MR, it's that point there. That's the MC of the monopolist. But yet the price for the monopolist is away up here. So quite clearly, for the monopolist, price does not equal min ATC. Sorry, what am I talking about? Price does not equal, ladies and gentlemen, marginal cost. So it's not allocatively efficient. So we can see, therefore, that the monopolist it's not productively efficient because P does not equal min ATC and it's not allocatively efficient because price does not equal marginal cost. Compare with perfect competition. What's the marginal cost of producing that output QPC? Well the marginal cost is here which is the same as the price. So the perfectly competitive firm is allocatively efficient. What about Productive efficiency, does the price equal min ATC, ladies and gentlemen? Of course it does, because we're at this point. So, the perfectly competitive firm is not only allocatively efficient, it's productively efficient, and those two things together, we know that we refer to as Pareto efficiency, when we've got both of those in existence at the same time. Very uh, special kind of efficiency, ladies and gentlemen. Now, of course, this diagram is illustrating efficiencies really at a point in time. So this is showing us static efficiency. We're comparing, we're taking a sort of a snapshot picture of a perfectly competitive market and a monopoly market and we're just comparing them at a point in time. The great advantage that the monopolist has, allegedly so called, is that this monopoly profit here could of course be used to research, to develop, to innovate, to find new methods of production, which ultimately may reduce costs and enable the monopoly producer to actually lower its price to a level below that of the perfectly competitive firm, in theory. The fact that the monopolist is producing to the left of the minimum ATC is also indicative of the fact that there are economies of scale to be exploited. And you should know, even just from your very basic analysis of economies of scale, economies of scale, if you exploit them, it enables you to lower costs and hence potentially reduce prices. And so the monopolists could benefit in that respect as well. And hence uh, there'd be an advantage there uh, in the long run potentially for the consumer because they have the ability to exploit economies of scale which perhaps the perfectly competitive firm does not have. So there we go. So that's a great diagram ladies and gentlemen for uh, comparing monopoly and perfect competition on the one diagram. It saves having to faff around doing both diagrams, do your perfect competition diagram, then do your monopoly diagram beside it and then compare them. This is a great diagram for doing both on the one diagram. It saves a lot of time and it, it you know, it's so clear isn't it? The price under monopoly is much higher than perfect competition. Output under monopoly is much lower and then compare the efficiencies. So I hope you found that useful, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I'll see you again for another edition of Geekonomics.